what's up everyone? Aaron with Elite Water Sports hanging out here in the OBX and I'm gonna do a quick overview on how to set up your kite. So first things first is making sure that you have a really nice location for setup and rigging. That location should be a nice soft patch of sand or grass or anything without debris that might hurt your kite, okay? So let's go ahead and take that kite out of its fancy big bag. And you're gonna open it up just like a bed sheet, holding that leading edge, making sure that you hold on nice and tight so it doesn't go flying down the beach. Now, depending on how you folded up your kite determines how hard it is to flake it out. But basically, you wanna make sure that all your wingtips are 100% unfolded. A lot of people take advantage of it being folded up in a certain way where they can just pump it up and the wingtips roll out. And we've seen a lot of kite repairs needed after that when that bladder internally is twisted. So after you get the kite all flaked out and in position, you're gonna take that pump with a nice leash on it and secure your kite with that leash. Every location on the kite's a little bit different depending on the brand. This one has a loop in the middle of it. You're gonna clip it in right here and then you'll focus on your, your nozzle, your valve. Most of these are one-way valves, a check valve per se. And Every single brand is going to be a little bit different. That's why you have all these fancy adapters and whatnot to make sure that it works on your kite. Get all those adapters out of the way and then it twists on. So, you know, if this is your brand, you'd have just one uh, adapter on your hose, you get rid of the rest. Um, but in this situation, we use a lot of different brands, so we need a lot of different adapters. One day, all the brands will come together and have a universal adapter. All right. Now on the pump side of things, you have several different settings on uh, most pumps these days, either uh, a single action or a double action. We certainly want the double action, so it's pumping on the upward stroke and the downward stroke. You notice the wind is to my back and the kite leash is on, the pump leash is on and along with the hose, so you have two points of securing the kite to you, so it's not gonna go anyway. And here's the warm up part. Make sure you stretch out that lower back get some squats in, get that heart rate up. Some people use electric pumps, but I always say that this is the warm up for your session. Let's do this. All right, it just started getting a little tougher on me. So I'm gonna go over to the single action. So now it doesn't work on the way up, only works on the way down so I can have gravity help me out for those last bit bits of air. Now we have a couple different techniques to figure out on how much air do we put in these kites. Most of the kites are going to be labeled either in between uh, four pounds and eight pounds and this kite is not labeled. So what I'm going to do is a pressure test and a flexibility test. Basically trying to bend it and if it bends too easily I need to put more air in it. This one's absolutely perfect so what I'm going to do is disconnect those adapters, disconnect my hoses, secure the valve, make sure there's no leaking going on, cover it up and now we have a fully inflated kite. Reviewing that if you hold the kite up in an upright position and it doesn't fold over, you have enough air in it, okay? Age old theory on under inflating your kite may possibly not damage it if you were to crash it on the water harder. But what we've seen in the repair shop is that all these seams flex too much constantly, which wears out the material even more. So you have, have to actually inflate it all the way up so that you can have a more durable structure to the canopy. All right, so if you look over here, your next step is going to be securing these valves. The leading edge and the struts are separated by a wall in between, so two different bladders here, and then you have a hose connecting them. What's that called? A one pump system. But you also have a valve that you can shut off to make sure that these don't communicate with each other anymore so that if you happen to pop your leading edge, now the strut won't deflate and you still have a raft if you were to uh, crash your kite and pop it or, or whatnot. 
So safety first, let's close off all these valves. The age old saying goes, you never wanna go out further than what you wanna swim, right? Okay, so all the valves are closed off and now what we wanna do is secure the kite to the ground. What we'll do is we'll flip this kite over. You kind of walk your hands to about midway point between the uh, middle of the kite and the wingtip. And then the wind will flip it over really nice and easy. And you notice I'm not fighting it too much, right? I can then walk the kite wherever I need it to go and then lay it down nice and gentle, knowing that this grass doesn't have any thorns or sharp shells that could uh, possibly uh, puncture my leading edge. All right, landing it down on the ground, we wanna make sure that this strut is perfectly in line with the wind, almost like an arrow. And you can see the canopy is pressing down onto the surface of the grass. Now, in a windier situation, what you wanna do is take your board and don't make the mistake of having your fins down. It's another repair issue we have in the shop. We wanna have those fins up and in between the handle and the pad. Now, as the day gets windier, we can have other things like your pump weighting down on your board or possibly sand, seagrass, anything of weight, mass to help keep this board down so it doesn't fly away. If it gets too windy, this board will lift up and then your kite kind of goes with it. You don't want that to happen. Uh, now, if you are on a sandy beach, what we could do is take all that sand and pile it into the kite. And that also helps with some of the flapping going on that also wears out your kite. So that is our pump up and set up for the kite. And now we're gonna do some rigging. So stay tuned, look at the next video. This is Aaron with Elite Water Sports.